Blog Talk Radio. Lafia, Jumbo, peace and love to everyone. We welcome you once again to Rafiki Radio. And this is Muka Jara. I'm here with my sister Aura. Peace and love, sis. Peace and love. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I'm thankful. I'm very thankful. How you feeling this evening? I'm doing well. Um into this new moon energy for the day, a lot of awareness, a lot of it. So I'm just um, grateful for new opportunities and new beginnings once again. <sighs> With great awareness. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, let's go on and open up. With our prayer, and then we will get into the topic for the day. Okay. This is a prayer for our ancestors. I give thanks and praises to my beloved and benevolent ancestors. I thank you for protecting me. I thank you for walking with me. I thank you for showing me the truth. I thank you for teaching me discernment. I thank you for keeping me alert. I thank you for reassuring me when I thought there was no way out. I love you infinitely, ancestors, for all that you endured so that my life on this plane is filled with lessons that could never be taught in the book. I praise you, benevolent ancestors. I honor you, benevolent ancestors. I appreciate all you do in my life, and I continue to gratify you in the most sincere way. Ashe. Amen, Ra. Okay, I say to uh, give thanks, and we are here on this new moon day. It's a new moon in Aries. So this Moon is coming with a bit of fire, (laughs) and I know some people have been experiencing that fire, that transformation, that energy that comes with that fire power. So um, we always like to honor the moon. We like to set our intentions at this moon time. 
And um, this is definitely one with a, a strong energy to make things happen. So if you have not done it already, you still have time to go ahead and write your intentions out, things that you want to bring to yourself. Um, Write them down, and you can put the paper on your altar or on a sacred space or put it on your bathroom mirror so you can look at it on a regular basis and work to bring that energy or whatever it is that you want to bring to yourself. Work with the moon energy. And what are, what are you feeling with the new moon energy, sister? Okay, are you here still with us? Yes. <laughs> I got to remember that. You <laughs> but, you know, yeah. a lot of activity, a um, lot of get up and go energy, a lot of um, decisiveness. Things just ready to clear things that don't need anymore. Having that courage to release, um, release things that you know have been around for a long time, and um, you know that's that's been a constant thing. You know, release just seems to be a constant thing with me. But um, you know, a lot of that, even you know, in relationships, even so, um, you know, just what I want, what I do not want, what I'm willing to tolerate, moving forward, going into my, you know, into the new cycle, and what I know that I'm knowing my worth, um, and just even what I want to have in my space, be it things or people or experiences, or mindsets. Um, so it's it's been it's a powerful um new moon, you know, it's breaking habits. This is a wonderful time to do it. I mean, it's just <laughs> it's just it's just a lot of it's just a lot of things and it's like a urgency because I know that Mars is going into retrograde in a little bit more than a week. And so that fire, you know, we got to utilize that fire while we got it because, you know, part of what that Mars energy is about is going to pull back. So it's like, okay, <laughs> let me roar now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yes, the Mars in at Ogun energy and Mars is in Sagittarius, so that's just more fire upon fire. <laughs> and, belief, so, and belief structure, with it being in Sagittarius. Mm-hmm. You know, mm. that, that's, that's, that's where that, that Mars energy is really affecting, is, is old belief. And what is it, uh, how is it serving us? You know, and, and the direction, mm. the archer, where are we aiming for? Right, shift in that paradigm. Well, yeah. I know people have been feeling it. It's, it's been the process for those of us who've been working with the moon energy and seeing how it's been moving um, for the past year. Or so really, just a lot of clearing and releasing and making way for the new, the new new cycle, the age of Aquarius, and all of those wonderful things. And we actually have a class coming up this weekend in Philadelphia. Uh, we'll be oh. having a group share. Yes, <laughs> we are excited. We love to go to Philly. And we're going to have a healing circle tomorrow night at the Haven. And we invite everyone. This is actually open to the public, people who want to experience the Raseki energy you are welcome to come. We are asking for donations. And we will have our classes, Kinetic Reiki Level 1 and 2, on Saturday and Sunday. We do have room available if you have not registered and are interested in coming. You can definitely um, register still in advance or just come on by the Haven on Saturday early so that you can register for the classes. And you can get more information about those classes and our other upcoming events at RosekiHealing.com. And also 
we are celebrating the family and encouraging everyone to work on healing your family this month of April. So this is, you know, we talk about healing ourselves and we have, we always work on healing ourselves. That's something that is a continuous process. But we also want to reach out to those that are close to us, our family members, extended family members, and do what we can to help elevate our families because, you know, it takes strong families to make a strong community. And families are the foundation of the community, basically. So, it is important to have time other than those holiday dinners <laughs> to really devote to um, building up our families. Um, I, I've met some very powerful families in my time. I guess I would say the Marley family is one of my favorites at this time because they are they seem to be very close. They're very active with each other. They seem to support each other and you know, they have a lot of um, products and other things that they do um, as a family. So I use them as an inspiration for my own family. <clears throat> and, um, yes, yeah, so we invite everyone who is listening to join in with that. I don't know if I would call it a campaign. It's, it's just um, a movement, I would say. For the month of April, I like the um, whole idea of um, focusing on our families. Our families have gone through so much over the generations and just throughout time, um, and just even now, just really, just with a lot of things that we see today, we need each other more so than ever before. And, you know, all family isn't necessarily blood, but it does help to heal the bloodline. But even in creating family in our communities and in our circles of support systems, you know, we have the family that we are born into, and then we have the family that we choose in our conscious state. So, um, you know, family comes in many, many ways, and um you know, we should be in a place where we are starting to work together in a very healthy way, having healthy, um, loving, compassionate relationships, being patient with one another, caring for one another, you know, thinking of someone above oneself from time to time, and um, even just doing things in a collective fashion so that, you know, the needs of the whole can be met, you know. So there's a lot of things that we can do. And I think also, um, you know, just the family is the foundation of a strong nation. And if our homes are in disrepair, (laughs) if that's the right word, Uh, then, um, you know, that will therefore be the same of anything else that we build on top of that. So we have to um, strengthen and shore up our foundation. And um, I really salute your spirit to being open to the messages to deliver this to our community and people worldwide um, to focus, not just one day, but a whole month. (laughs) <laughs> and I, I'm just really, really grateful Really grateful For this opportunity you like I appreciate that And our families are worth it I mean, really So You can um, we, we actually have some tips That we are sharing About the family healing and those tips are coming through on social media. On Facebook, we have uh, Raseki Arts Temple page, and on Instagram as well. So if you want to get more information and join in, definitely visit us online. And what else do we have going on coming up? Um, 
the meditation CD. I knew it was something else that I wanted to mention, and I'm very excited about this project. It is a collection of kinetic uh, meditations. And um, we had a meditation with our sister Aura, one with myself, and a couple more sisters. And these meditations are extremely powerful for helping. We talked about releasing and for helping people who um, have different pains in different areas or if you are wanting to learn more about your chakras, your ritus, and your energy centers, um, this CD is definitely um, something that you may want to check out and add to your collection. You can listen and download the CD online at raseki.bandcamp.com. And you can also buy the CD for those who still have CD players. <laughs> you can buy the CD at <laughs> rasekistore.com. I know um, this is the new tech I like CDs myself. <laughs> I would play records I'm if you could. <laughs> but um, check that out if you get a chance. Um, well, you should just take some time to check it out because I know most of us are very busy. We have a lot of stress, and meditating is a good way to help relieve that stress and help you to relax and balance yourself. So make sure you go and listen to the new meditation CD. It's called Nefer Aritu, The Beautiful Chakras. So, um, yeah, give thanks for that. And I guess we're going to go ahead and move to our topic. We are... We do have a very special guest. I'm very thankful and honored. And if our guest is listening in or called in, we want you to dial one so that we can bring you on the line. And you can tell us a little bit more about this topic. I know whatever I could tell would probably be only a portion um, for our esteemed elder, uh, Professor James Small. He, um, many people may have gotten to know this man more recently um, due to uh, Hidden Colors series, and he was part of that. I know that he his work goes far back. Um, even working with uh, Malcolm X and also working over the years in, um, in traditional African religion, um, particularly uh, Ifa tradition of the Yoruba people, and um, also um, versing the Khan spiritual traditions of Ghana, as well as uh, voodoo. Uh, but his his knowledge base is so broad and so vast and so relevant to our people as a whole, even especially, especially right now. And um, every time he speaks, I'm just coming away empowered and having a deeper knowledge uh, or, or awareness on just about everything that he speaks on. Professor Smalls, I believe he worked um, for many years at City University in New York or City College of New York. Um, he does so much. <laughs> I hope he comes on so. So just in case I have missed anything, he can share more. But um, I'm, it's just an honor, an honor to um, – be able to sit at the feet and to listen to such a wise and esteemed elder such as himself. So <laughs> I'm here. Yay! I'm here. Peace and blessings. 
And welcome, welcome to our show. We thank you so much for joining us, Professor Smiles. How you feeling yes, this evening? Ma'am. How are y'all doing? Uh, we're doing pretty good. Um, yes. Just very grateful and fiery. <laughs> Feeling the fire. That's a good way to put it. So where are we going to go? Well, I know that tonight our our topic is politics and politics. And just pretty much the relevance of our community. We were speaking about the black family earlier and um, focusing on that, but um, you know, definitely want to go into the topic that pretty much affects just about everybody's life in some way or another. So um, definitely looking forward to hearing and just sharing in dialogue with you tonight on the topic, if that's okay. Yeah. I don't know, that's fine. You know, like, I've just been, I was a little late because I've got a big family emergency that I'm dealing with as we speak, except mm. they're upstairs moving furniture around. Um, my, my youngest son had a major fire in his apartment complex on the Good Friday night, and um been struggling. They've been living with me while we're struggling to get their place back together, and each night I have to drive them from Harlem back up to Westchester to the city where I live. And so I'm in the midst of doing that. So they're moving furniture while I'm doing the radio show to buy some time. They're helping me out here tonight. So oh, wow. um, the, um, you know, when we say politics and politics, you know, what we see on television and what we really see in the state house and, um, what we see in federal government and local city government is mostly politics against black folks because we have, don't have the sense to create politics for ourselves. And so white folks practice politics on us. You can't live in America and say you're not going to be involved in electoral politics. That's silly. thing that affects your life, every decision that's made legally affecting the institutions you're in, and I know you all have an issue down there right now with charter schools. Um, it's politics and policymakers that's going to decide whether you're going to have charter schools. So either you're going to keep letting your enemy be selected and elected to offices and appointing even more enemies to offices, or you're going to get smart and move from being politic into practicing politics. So you can elect your own people to these offices to make the policies and decisions that affect your lives on a daily basis. That's reality if you live in America. Mm. You know? And 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 there's no way around it. Matter of fact, any 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 time we say we're not gonna be involved, the enemy is happy. Because this competition has been lessened. You know? And his ability to cause us harm have been increased. If you got to have policemen, then you got to have them. Then those policemen should be from your community. If you got to have a mayor and city council person, they should be from your community. If you got to uh-huh. have people on the board of education and on other local community boards that make decisions on land use and, and on building issues and standards of living and health boards and then you should have someone from your community that you've elected or you have elected someone who will appoint these people. If you're going to have a principal, then have a school board that you have elected from your community or at least have enough of your members on that board so that your issues and the policies that affect the lives of your children could be on the front burner. You're not going to do that just standing on the protest line. Right. Okay. Right. And and <laughs> protesting is part of what you got to do. 
to stay relevant and to keep the pressure on. But if you don't take advantage of being in the driver's seat, then you're always chasing the car driven by somebody else and asking why they didn't stop at your door. Because we are now caught in, you know, politics. Politics is nothing more than the management of the wealth of a community that people uh, develop. It creates the laws, the rules, and regulations to manage the wealth that a community develops. And so if you're not involved in politics, then somebody else is managing the wealth, and they're not going to manage it in your interest. And the wealth in a community, for the most part, is tax revenue that comes back to your community for varied services. So if you're not the manager, then who's going to be managing the revenue and who's going to get the services? I'm making this simple. Y'all with me? Yes. Yes. (laughs) Your message is loud and clear. (laughs) And that don't mean you don't deal with ethnic politics. That don't mean you don't deal with race politics. That doesn't mean you don't deal as a Pan-Africanist. All of that is a part of your politics. But you can't negate the essential element, because if we live in the United States, they have an electoral, not a parliamentary, um, Republican democracy. Okay? And that means, for the most part, you elect people to handle the issues in your community politically that affects the lives of everyone there. Now, if you're not going to be in that game, then your enemy is going to be in that game, and you're going to always be the protester and the person at the bottom. So people come from Latin America, all over Central, South America, and Mexico, and in one generation, they empower themselves politically. People come from the Arab world, and they empower themselves economically because they can partner with the other white-skinned people who have empowered themselves politically. We've been there for 300 years, and we're still saying, uh, is it, is, how do we open a bank? Shit don't make no sense. Make no sense. Mm-hmm. We spent a trillion dollars last year, but if we wanted to borrow some money to build a house, we got to go to the same white man. Mm-hmm. Now, what's wrong with us? There's a lot wrong with crazy. Yeah, we're caught up in the white man politics. And we are confusing it for consciousness. Consciousness mm-hmm. is not being ignorant of how to control economic politics and culture. Consciousness is having the sense to understand that you must control the economics, the politics, and the culture in the communities in which you live. Wearing our traditional clothing is wonderful. Wearing traditional hairstyle is fantastic. Taking traditional African names is on the point. Speaking even our languages out there, knowing our history of Kemet and the Yoruba and the Akans and so forth and the Zulu is fantastic. But if you ain't got no money, you can't pay no rent. You can't buy no house. You can't pay to have your children the things they need to develop themselves. And if you got some money, if you got a job and you're making some money and they're taking your tax money and you're not the political person in the office, then they're taking the money that you're making that's supposed to help you survive and somebody else is managing it for you. So it's about economic politics and culture, but consciousness means being conscious of the fact that you must control those things in order to call yourself a community. Mm. I see. <laughs> I say so, that, yes. that's, that's, that's what consciousness is. We live in America. That's real. We live in these different states, North Carolina, South Carolina, New York. That's real. How is it governed? And what role have we in the governing of these communities we live in? How do we determine that we get access to the wealth that is being produced. Walked on the average street, and when I, I remember I was in Charlotte not too long ago, walking with you, little sister, and I'm going by the Arab store, the Asian store, the white folks store, 
the other kind of agent store. Everybody is in our damn community getting our money set for us. Walk into the beauty shop. Remember was that me and you went to the beauty shop that day? Beautiful Yay. sister was at the counter, but the lady counting the money was from Asia. In the middle of the black community. Come on, people. See, you need to get out of the realm of politics and get into the realm of politics, meaning you control the economic politics and culture where you live, not having the Asians control it, the Arabs control it, the Latino control it, the Jews control it, the Irish control it. That ain't consciousness. That's deadness. That's deadness. Let's get out of deadness into consciousness. Consciousness means to be aware, to be aware of the very moment that you live in, to be aware of all of the forces and factors that are affecting your life in that moment and what to do to make them have the most positive, long-lasting effect. That's what consciousness means if you put a definition to it. So let's move from politics, where we're fooling ourselves we don't need to be involved, to politics, where we want to be clear. If we want to control our school, if we want to control the park, if we want to determine whether the streets get fixed, if we want to determine whether the garbage gets picked up on time, if we want to determine where the library is going to be and what time it opens or closed, if we're going to determine the after-school program, then you better control the politics meaning you better elect yourself and your friends and your family to office or your enemies will be elected to those office and you'll just be complaining about the politics of somebody else, which is the politics of yourself. I say. And that's the whole show right there. Y'all need to ask some questions. (laughs) 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 That is a lot. Um, I would like to ask, um, because we've been going through this gentrification period and our communities have been shifting, and a part of that is because we have not been in control, but what would you say um, we should do right now? I feel like we don't really have an agenda, like we just, we're here, we're wandering and not really moving together towards. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. We don't have an understanding of what a community is. We don't have communities. We have neighborhoods. Neighborhood is a piece of geography where people who have a common history, a common language, and a common culture reside and may also have a common interest and a common history. Now, a community is all of those things except people control the economic, the politics, and the socialization. And since we don't control the economics in the community, every, in the neighborhoods we live in, and we don't control the politics in the neighborhoods we live in, and we don't control the socialization, meaning the essential services, the school, the police, and the firemen, we don't live in communities. We live in neighborhoods that's in someone else's community. So your community is not being gentrified. The people who own the communities are just deciding to reside there. And did you get that? You got it. <laughs> That's real. That's the real yeah. deal. Mm-hmm. That's the real deal. In order to call someplace a community, you got to own the real estate. You got to be the policeman. You got to be the fireman. You got to be the elected official. Okay, you got to own the retail businesses, then that's your community. If somebody else is doing all of those things, it's their community. If you happen to live there, it is your neighborhood. And that's mm-hmm. probably why we always call it the hood, because we know it's not the community. It's our hood. It's somebody else's community, because they own the real estate. They run the retail businesses. They're the policemen. They're the elected officials. They run our school system, socializing the lives of our children. It's their community. So it's not being gentrified. They're simply assuming residence in their community, which you just happen to be a neighbor in their community. 
mm-hmm. confusing your neighborhood status with community status because we don't know the definition. Whew. Girl, you're mighty quiet. You know, the thing is, all right, so with this, continuing on with gentrification, and you know, and I know you're, some neighborhoods. I'm just told you you can't call it gentrification because it ain't your community. Well, there are some, very few now, they're dwindling where there may have been home ownership with black people traditionally, and they had been left. And now that generation that was owning it and maintaining the property are mm-hmm. either getting older or they're dying off. And then you so have it has been reduced. <laughs> it has been reduced to a neighborhood because young mm-hmm. black folks did not take over the businesses. That's right. They did not. They did not run for political office. They do not control the school. They are not the policemen. It is not your community. It's just the neighborhood where you live. You may own a house or two, but for the most part you're renting in a neighborhood that may once have been a community. But since we lost what the sense of a community is, we don't know how to build one. And so how do we get back to that place of building, even now, with so much understand? Obstacles? Understand that you must control the economics and the politics and the socialization or culture where in the geography where you live. Now, how do we do that is where the plan's got to come in. How do we get an organized economic? How do we elect the people to office that's making the decisions about our lives so we can put our demands on them to make the decisions we want? How do we get control of the schools? So that we are socializing our children, and how do we become the policemen and firemen so we are in control of the public safety in that community? It starts, yes, by buying real estate. That's one of the big steps. But part is collectivizing your and consolidating um, your your economics. Mm-hmm. But you got to have an understanding of what builds a community. Right. It's not just a bunch of black folks living in the same place. Because if you live in there and two Arabs is controlling your food industry, you ain't in no damn community. That's right. And the Chinese is running the laundry, and the Koreans running the nail center, and the Dominican is running the hair parlor, and and you got um, uh, a Vietnamese running the beauty salon store, and the Indian is selling you hair, and you talking about your community. <laughs> So it just seems, it's it's really odd when I observe the paradigm. It seems to be on one end of the spectrum. You have many who, we're talking about politics now, and a lot of times people see themselves participating in the political process via voting. And it's really interesting to go by the voting centers or places and you know, a lot of times people really have not studied who actually are the people running for particular offices or the particular bonds and what the language and the verbiage means. Um, mm-hmm. And 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 many times I've seen, I notice people. This is it. Just seems to be for many for a few generations now, at least, just the assumption that you know people are going to vote straight party, and so just relying on political political party lines that may or may not be serving us, regardless of whether or not they're serving us. It's like that um, loyalty to a party that has not really been loyal to us or, or our interests. And um, that, that's then, not what the like, problem. That's not the, that's not the problem. The problem is okay. we don't understand what politics means, and we don't understand what community right. means. If we understood those things, party would be irrelevant. We'd know how to use the party. There's no reason why the Democrats from our community isn't black, and it's, and it's the black people we choose, you see? But we don't, we, we, we're just playing. We, we bought into something called integration into the white 
majority groups management system, and we gave up the black management system. Black Wall Street and Tulsa wasn't the only black community in America. Matter of fact, it wasn't bigger and richer than many, even one called Little Haiti right there in North Carolina, and another big one in Wilmington. They were almost as significant as Black Wall Street in the 1900s. So something happened to us after the 1950s, well, really 1913, when the Irish and the Jews gave us an organization called the NAACP and then began, began to use that false aspiration to destroy other black organizations that aspired for black control reality, while at the same time they were all getting their control reality. Blacks don't run the Jewish community. And blacks don't run Chinatown, and blacks don't run the Irish community, and blacks don't run the Italian community, but they all run the black community. Are you understanding so, what I'm saying? I, I'm feeling you, and what I'm, I I want to ask, I mean, it feels like then we should find a particular area that we can try to buy property and buy the stores back and at least work in one. I mean, you don't have to do it in one place. You're not going to get people to make that kind of geographical move. Just stop shopping at the stores that are there, and they'll sell all that shit to you for cheap. Mm -hmm. How are they going to keep a store open if you're not shopping there? That's true. How? So we've got to ask ourselves fundamentally, do we really want freedom? Because no one can give you freedom. You give yourself freedom. The word freedom Mm -hmm. itself actually means, the the free from the Latin means to liberate. Dome means the mind. Freedom means to liberate your mind. So if we want freedom, we need to liberate our mind from the politics and get serious about the politics. Freedom ain't free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just remember the word. It means liberated mind. If you liberate your mind, your behind will sure to follow. Right. <laughs> if you don't liberate your mind, you're in trouble. And so we don't have to move. We, we, we are in large numbers in these neighborhoods and other people's community. Stop spending our money with the people who are not our neighbors. They don't even live in our neighborhood. They take the money, and like Malcolm said, when the sun goes down, they take that money to another part of town where they live. And that's it. So why are we giving them our money to take to their communities instead of keeping our money and building it into our community? All building means is to use the capital you have and take control of the retail and and the um, real estate needs where you live. You don't have to move anywhere. Just stop shopping with the Korean people. Stop shopping with the Arab people. Stop being afraid to say things like I'm saying while those people are raking you across the coal, draining you of everything, not contributing nothing to you except a false smile. And we're scared to say they're doing us wrong. We're scared to say we're behaving wrongly. They're not doing us wrong. They're trying to make a living. That's fine. We're doing ourselves wrong by helping them to make a living and not helping ourselves to make a living. Uh, mm-hmm. Y'all sound like y'all well, scared. I was thinking because I'm like that whole convenience factor, like for instance, when you when you were in town and we went into that beauty supply store, you know, uh-huh. it was like short on time. But had had I, had I just been like, okay, we can go across town, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people do not make those decisions well, and, and not make excuses. But that's part of that whole this whole thing, that whole convenience culture and things happening right now, real fast, right away getting the cheapest one and not overstanding our value and the value of supporting 
our own businesses. Then what we'll do, we'll stay in slavery until we change our mind about mm-hmm. who we want to be free. Do we want the man from Yemen to be free, the man from Korea to be free, the man from India and the Philippines and Ireland and Israel to be free, or do we want to be free? Awareness. Okay? We have to make a decision. Are we going to take the hard-earned money that we made working on some job somewhere, and most of our people work for the municipality in one capacity or the other, so do we take that money and give it to the people we say are our enemies? the people for whom the police will come and bust our head to protect. And those same people that own those stores, they're never out there in a march with us when somebody has been shot down in our street. Mm-hmm. If they're around, they're trying to protect the store from us and asking the police to protect their stores from us. And yet we give them the, the hard-earned blood money we make to behave towards us in that manner and ask why nothing changes. Until we change, nothing will change. And the thing we have to change is our mind. And that means we have, that's what freedom is about, a liberated mind. Then you can liberate the behind. And I understand what you say about convenience. But I'm saying it's not going to be easy convincing our people that they're a dead, unconscious mass that needs to be awoke. It's not going to be an easy job. We've had some of the greatest leaders in the world come, and we've watched them murdered off. Dr. King got murdered because black folks helped the white folks murder him. Malcolm got murdered because black folks helped the white folks murder him. You know, Mm. Booker T. Washington got murdered because black folks helped the white folks murder him. Garvey got kicked out and deported because black folks helped Garvey, the white folks, kick him out and deported him. Patrice Lumumba got murdered because black folks helped the white folks murder him. And we can go on and on, talking about the dead unconscious people. So that's where I work about consciousness coming in. And the first level of consciousness is to know thyself. And the first level of knowing thyself is to know thy history. Basic. If you don't get that basic foundation, learning African-American history, then going into African history, basic foundation so that you can learn to know yourself and know who you are and how you got where you are and how you got to be who you are so you can know what changes are necessary so that you can control the economics, politics, and culture where you live so that you can move from being neighborhood into being communities and then bringing those communities together economically to be a black nation. Using all the technologies of the day like everyone else is doing. Yes, there's so much available now. We have some questions coming in, Baba, Mm -hmm. if you are um, to take in some questions. We do have a caller. Yes, ma'am. It's 9.48. I can go until 10 o'clock. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we have a caller at area code 219. Peace and love. Welcome. Peace and love. How you doing? This is Samantha. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Professor Smulo. I've been enjoying um, the subject matter you've been talking about tonight. Um, yes, I am from Gary, Indiana, but I'm currently down here in the Carolinas. And uh, from what I'm hearing, what you're saying, and I'm agreeing with, is that um, – the way to move from politics to politics, I mean, from politics to politics, is to um, consciously uh, pull our economic wealth and exercise it in a way where we build up our own people that we consciously uh, spend with black with black businesses. That's what I'm hearing, and through that we can uh, start building black communities and that you can start, um, I guess, putting elected officials into place that represent the values um, that we hold and want, you know, the goals that we want to see achieved 
And yeah, you got to elect your friends and your cousin and your uncles, and those are the people you got to elect to office. Not some strange black person that the white folks have put before you. So right. we have to realize that economics is the is how you control the wealth that will allow you to provide food, clothing, shelter, safety, and security for yourself. Politics is how you manage that wealth. And then the social or cultural give you your ethical, moral belief and principles like ma'at and, uh, and you know, Eoapil and other principles that will guide the character that you develop to use the politics to manage the wealth. I, I agree. I agree. Um, I uh, have been trying to get that plan across to other people. Like you said, that um, we don't stay in communities, that we stay in neighborhoods. And, mm-hmm. um, like, a lot of times we want to talk about, like, being from Gary Dan, I'm pretty sure that you're familiar with the area because um, people always want to talk about, oh, Gary used to be a great city and it being the, one of the first black mayors in the uh, country, and I'm telling people, well, you cannot blame what the city looks like now on black people because downtown is depleted just like it's depleted in Detroit and Dayton and, all the, and the, you know, all over where there was uh, a booming city and then black people got certain powers and the white people left. You can't blame that on black people because – those buildings are still owned by the original owners. They're not going to sell them, and they're not going to build them up until they know that the black people are no longer living there. Uh, they have, are, you know, they have significantly left, and they can run that area again. Yeah, you know, see, so. if you had a true, if you had a true black, true black mm-hmm. political leaders, because most of those people abandoned those buildings, the city could take all of them by. Um, what it's called, uh, eminent domain mm-hmm. for tax money, for tax revenues owe, and can redistribute those buildings by selling it to other people. And so, but mm-hmm. if you don't have the right black political leadership in place, that won't happen. The buildings will sit there abandoned, even though that person could say, you have not paid tax, you owe the city tax, the building belongs to us, the city. The city's going to now work with other community people to come up with um, uh, 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 investors from their community to collectively buy that facility and put some business there. But you cannot negate the fact that the money we need to do that, we're given to these other ethnic groups. So if we don't hold that money back and redirect it, even the good thoughts we're just talking about won't happen. Right, you know, I agree. You cannot, so, you cannot give all these other ethnic groups your money, and then expect you're gonna have a community because they ain't happening. Right, and um, that's one thing I do try my best to exercise is that. Okay, I know that I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna eat every day if I, you know. So if I'm not cooking at home, I will drive twenty or thirty minutes to go eat at a black restaurant. Um. Mm-hmm. You know, because, you know, we talk about the convenience. Oh, well, I don't feel like driving that far. But, you know, you get out your home and you're going to go anywhere to eat. Well, you know, what's 10 minutes? Because you think about that one convenience. Oh, I don't want to drive that period of time. But when you go eat where you're going to eat, you're inconvenienced because first thing you got to do is when you come in that door and you're greeted by those Greeks or those whatever – Arabs or whatever they are at that door, you got to put on that fake smile and you got to look like uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A Negro. You know what I'm saying? So you're inconvenienced mm-hmm. from then. And, you know, so how do we get people to realize that, okay, what's the difference between being inconvenienced for 10 minutes when, when you go wherever you're going to go and spend your money you're inconvenienced because you're going through that emotional battle of being right. or feeling well, or treated like you're lesser than. Well, even if they treated you like you were God, it would still be stupid to spend your money with. 
Indeed. Your son Indeed. is on the corner unemployed, selling drugs because he can't get a job. Your husband is drinking and depressed because he's unemployed and can't get a job. And you're working two jobs for nothing with people mm. who are disrespecting you. And the little bit of money y'all make, you're giving right back to the same people who are disrespecting you and keeping you from developing industry to have jobs for yourself. It's redirecting your capital. They should be talking right. about this in every church in our community, every mosque in our community, every land. They're talking about Jesus and Allah, but ain't nobody mm. telling the people how to behave in a manner that Jesus and Allah would be pleased with their economic situation because they could provide food, clothing, shelter, and safety for themselves. They're busy talking about a salvation beyond this world. That goes for the Muslims, too. They're doing the same thing. They're no more than Christians in black faith, and, 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 and Muslims and Christians are no more than Muslim in black faith. They're both teaching a white uh, agenda on, on spiritual reality, confusing people, and you can't separate your politics from your religion, from your history, from your culture, from your economics. They're all part of one package. Right. They're all part because of you're one set package. Because you set your agenda by what you believe in. Mm-hmm. So if you That's believe right. in a certain thing, you're going to operate a certain way. Right. right. And that's why and I tell you the foundation is know your history. Because knowing your history is going to let you know yourself and identify yourself on the map of human experience, meaning you say, how did I arrive here in Charlotte, North Carolina? I arrived here because of these sets of historical experiences, and these sets of historical experiences involved genocide against my people, involved enslavement of our people, involved murder of our people. Who were the ones committing these crimes against me? And you're going to find that it's the same person whose stores you're walking into every day spending your hard-earned money so that they can employ their children, their nephews, their uncles, their fathers, while your nephews and sons and uncles and fathers standing on the corner trying to figure out how to get a hustle going against themselves to make a few dollars to bring some food, clothing, shelter home. I'm hoping this is hitting home, people. Yes, I I hear you loud and clear. And we do have another whole audience. (laughs) <laughs> now, we, we I'm going to leave you all in a few minutes Because i got to pick up my babies And take them another hour drive To my home, home. So all um, right. you know, so We had a massive fire in the family Two weeks ago And we really just kind of Going through the recovery And the development And getting out of that right now And I'm the one who was the father with the car So Um Right. But I've enjoyed well, my homes. If there's anybody, anybody else on the line with a question, we can take it before I go. All right. We do have another caller in who wanted to make a comment. Peace and love. Welcome. Can you hear us, caller, at 646? Okay. Hello? Yeah. Hello. They hear you. Oh, okay. Am I on? Yes, you oh, are yes, on. Ma'am. Ask your question before he goes. Okay. Um, well, I guess it's more like a, a statement than a question. Well, I guess it's both. Um, it appears to me from my observation, from what I'm observing, that the um, um, the um, conscious community or so-called conscious community um is looking to divest itself of the whole political scene and has um, divested itself of the political scene and is moving more towards, um, um, you know, creating small businesses, uh, et cetera. Um, The problem is that uh, many of these businesses uh, do not have a really big uh, economic um, impact. Um, they are perhaps um, enough to um, um, to keep these people, um, you know, fed, you know, their their immediate families and that sort of thing. But the economic impact is not that great. Um, and the other part of that is um, 
that in terms of uh, in terms of getting into office and 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 buying into that whole thing, I think that many in the conscious community believe that that's a no win situation. And in fact, you're hearing um, uh, a number of people saying, "Well, you know, it's time to just uh, move on out of this country anyway because it's it's never going to work for us. It's never going to work for us." Um, what are your comments about that? What do you, What are your thoughts? Everything Everything that you have just see a very positive position. The unconscious community that have been running the black the black neighborhood and have been involved in the elected politics, have not produced anything of significance. That's why we're in the mess we're in. What I'm suggesting is that we not only get into the politics, but we get the Negro consciousness out of the politics. We have millions and millions and millions and tens of millions of our people voting. Why aren't we getting the results? We put a president in it twice who was supposed to be black. And the first thing he said was, I'm not the black president. I've never heard a white man said that. I've never heard a Jewish man said that. I've never heard an elected Hispanic said that. Why is it necessary? You have to say that. The next thing he had to do was denounce Minister Farrakhan. I've never seen any white folks denounce the Klan or denounce anybody. And, mm. and Farrakhan certainly is not the Klan. He had to denounce um, his own minister, Reverend Wright, because he said, God damn America. I I don't understand why this thing they call God haven't damned America. But what we have done, the conscious community has advanced us, the the community of young people that's calling themselves the conscious community, is the most progressive element of our community right now. They just need to add something to what they're doing, and that is control the electoral politics in the neighborhoods they live. The country is run by small businesses. That Arab store in the corner makes sufficient money because there's enough of them around the city. That nail, that Korean nail place, it's enough of them around the city. Small businesses is what run America. And we need to get back into small business. Our problem is we spend most of our money, like all people, with small businesses, but we're spending it with other ethnic groups. And we're afraid to deal with the question of, other ethnic groups exploiting us economically without feeling guilty if we don't give them our money so we'll be broke, then we're doing something wrong. And so we tend to continue to suffer. Every one of those things that you said that sounds critical of the, the, the so-called conscious community, I don't even like the term conscious community. I like to talk about the younger element, generation in the community, because there are people who are, Conscious all over the place, and there are people who are unconscious all over the place. But what we have to begin to do is understand that if you don't control the businesses in your community, it is not a community, okay? That's the first thing. Secondly, if you don't understand that economic politics and culture is essential to be in your hands or you're not going to provide food, clothing, shelter, and safety to yourself and your family, you may provide it to some degree. If you've got a job at the post office, you can rent a nice apartment. If you've got a job working as a lawyer, you can have a nice little home. But then you're just one person with a, a few little friends that hang out in upscale little white restaurants pretending you have arrived someplace, and the only place you have arrived is where you're hiding from the other black folks who don't have nothing. So we need to understand if, you, if you're going to control your life, you must control the economics and the politics and the culture and the geography where you reside, period. That's the only way you're going to meet your primary objective, which is providing food, clothing, shelter, safety, and security for yourself and your family. That's the bottom line. To get to the consciousness, that consciousness simply means to be aware of your contemporary and current reality and to be involved in that due to that awareness. That means you must study your history. You must know the history of African-American people and then the history of African people. So you figure out, how did I get to this place? 
how did I get where I'm standing today? On a street corner in Harlem at 152nd and Broadway. How did I get here? What was the set of circumstances that put me here? It is, those under, it is the understanding of those sets of circumstances that put you where you are that's going to allow you to develop the systemic programming that will keep you from being in that place again. And My brother. Learning how to control economic politics and culture to produce, produce food, clothing, shelter, safety for yourself and your family. Now I got to go do what I'm talking about. Get my little family over there. Get my little two-month-old <laughs> baby and my two-year-old baby and my 34-year-old baby and his 35-year-old wife baby and the 16-year-old and put them in his car and take them home so they can go to bed. Um, but I hope I've been useful and helpful, sisters. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and we appreciate you and taking the time with such so much going on. We definitely appreciate you and really hope to have you again. Oh, I promise I'll be back. I promise I'll be back. Oh, do I? Thank you. Okay. All right. Peace and blessings to everyone in our listening sphere. Um, food, clothing, shelter, safety, and security will allow you, will, will be possible for you if you control economic politics and culture. That will happen when you become conscious by knowing your history and your ancestors' experience, apply them to making the rules you need to build your world. And freedom means liberated mind. Free your mind and your behind will be right behind it. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to yeah. say good night to everyone. Hotep. Yeah, hotep. Peace and we thank you so much. And love welcome. to your family. Yes, ma'am, and lots of y'all, too, and all of the listening community. Remember, there is no conscious community. There's an element of our community trying to be conscious, and that will always be to eternity. But that trying to be consciousness is a blessing. Just let's try to expand our path, you know, through knowledge and understanding. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. That was a lot Ooh. of information. <laughs> Very <Good>. fundamental. <laughs> that food, clothing, and shelter is serious business. We cannot survive without it. And if we're going to be self-determining people, that's the one word that keeps coming to mind is um, like self-determination, that Kuji Chakalia and um, – you know, what What can we determine for ourselves if we're not controlling, you know, our resources and how they are managed? So those are some very powerful, powerful points. That he, that and has. the food, clothing, shelter, safety, and security. Mm. <laughs> because they are important and we have seen, you know, how important they are in these recent years um for our people in so many areas, so much has been going on. So that safety and security piece is, is crucial. You know, that's why we have to have a community where we have our own police officers who know the people in the community and will not just, you know, automatically shoot someone. Um, just because maybe black those were missing elements with the Black Wall Street, I believe. It was a missing element of that security and safety. You know, those 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 communities like Tulsa, uh in in, in Durham, Wilmington, different places, Rosewood, you know, you had um prosperous communities and even you know, in South Carolina, you know, political, there was a time during Reconstruction where, um, you know, blacks had uh, a very prominent political position in certain places throughout the South during a time. But then that was overturned and, you know, it was, it was just a lot of things that's going on. So that history, oh, 
there's so many things that to we have the history, we have blueprints. You know, I'm now thinking of you know communities that have a history of having political power and being able to rise, even if they did fall, um, to learn from what they didn't do and what they did do. <sighs> Just like right. so much. It brings us around to the safety and security again because Black Wall Street was burned down, just like many of the cities that were built during those times. So the security and safety uh, is always an issue for us, or it has been, and for some other communities that have been set up as well. Um, broken down, <laughs> um, even if you know the land was owned and everything like that, it was still it was still taken over in some cases. So that is a lot to think about and to um, consider. You know, I really appreciate him saying that we just need to stop supporting the other businesses that are in the communities. <clears throat> and I know oftentimes there are stores that really treat our people bad, and we still go back to the store, you know, on a regular basis and continue to um, enrich those people, even though they treat us poorly. So things like that, you know, we could change tomorrow, <laughs> you know, and that is something that would really make a difference in our community. And we're helping, <clears throat> I can't even say in our community because he definitely clarified that we don't really have any communities right now. So in those hoods where we're living, um, we can make a difference as soon as tomorrow and tell other people, you know, this is what we need to do so that we can empower ourselves and really build a community because it's something that we need. It's like our children need it as well. It's not just for us, but for those who are coming after us. So we're going to just keep that conversation going. And um, what would you say to that, my sister? We have to um, build and we have to have something for our children to look forward to within our community or our energy is going to continue to be dispersed. Um, you know, and, and, and like, and like the mama that called in last, you know, she was talking about, um, you know, the, the businesses that are in the so-called conscious community or <laughs> in, in, in the spheres of, you know, of, of, of black awareness and black business and things like that. Um, there aren't a whole lot that are economically viable to make a huge impact um, as far as employing large numbers. And usually if there are any, it's a few, very small percentage. Um, And it's just we still have to come up with more creative ways. Like even, for instance, um, susus are very um, viable ways of um, encouraging circulation of the dollar. Um, organi- organizing, um, even if they are small, black businesses coming together as a collective, uh, sharing information, sharing resources, um, things like that. I've been part of a group like that, um, wish they were still running and active today, but when they were, um, when I was able to participate, that was a wonderful exercise and example of seeing and experiencing uh, dollars circulating in a, in a group of that would be it's pretty much one of the closest aspects of community that I've experienced since um, being in 
involved in the church, you know, which used to be at one point uh, the center of politics in what used to be the black community. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's so many it's so many ways that we can look at it, and um, I just know that we have to look. I if, if we look back to our history, we can see um, patterns and blueprints but also just educating ourselves on what our options are and just even coming together collectively, even in small groups, um, to this of solutions that are viable for meeting our needs. Because the bottom line is, is that our interests and our needs need to be met. Great. Right. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that would be my motivation for participating in a political process. But many of us participate in very shallow ways in a political process without even believing or having any hope that our needs will be met. So I'm glad for this discussion so that we can come up with other ways. Yes, we um, we definitely should be strategizing and planning and working, not just talking. I think that um, our conscious community has gotten um, kind of stuck. Like we get information, we change our names, we change the way we eat, and then we kind of get in a comfortable place with that or it seems or it feels like we get comfortable with that and and don't continue that process of building, nation building, which was a big part of the conscious community, you know, when I became a part of it years ago. Um, that was That was something that you would hear people say often, it's nation time, you know, it's time to build. And that was the time when we had a lot of black bookstores, we had a lot of black schools, and many of those schools and stores have closed since that time. We do have, um, I would say, some new businesses opening, a lot of uh, health-oriented businesses, which is a positive thing because, you know, we do have a lot of, things, ailments, and sickness in our community or in our neighborhoods, and um, we need to do some healing. So I think that call is being answered in a lot of ways. We are seeing small businesses open in different areas, and we just need to continue to um, encourage our young people to build their own businesses and to support each other and you know, to carry that torch, really, you know, because at one time the young people were very active in the movement, in the revolution, in in the conscious community. And, you know, I don't know if we could say that right now. I feel like we've seen more young people get involved with the protests and things like that, but I'm not sure um, how much further they're going uh, because, there are many more things that we could do <laughs> besides protests, of course, and building businesses is a big part of it because, as Baba said, you know, the economic, uh, being able to control our resources, that economic piece is crucial, and that is probably what we're missing other than our, our true spiritual and, and traditions, our true spiritual traditions, our culture and that whole uh, economic piece um, is what we're missing in our hood, and that <laughs> would make us a community. <laughs> so, I mean, he really brought yeah. it on nice to all of us, and, you know, when you hear truth, you can't deny it because it is the truth, and... Um, so, yes, we definitely need to work on that. And as we 
in the beginning of the show, building the stronger families will help us to, because I feel like, you know, it takes families to have a strong business. You know, small businesses can be run by one or two people, but if there is a family involved, you know, usually those businesses tend to grow, expand, and they last longer as well. So um, that family work is crucial as well. The knowledge is so many, so many different aspects, you know, that we have to work on to build the schools. More of our schools, our children, you know, need to be educated by us. Um, as I understand it, a lot of schools have been closing in some of the major cities. And what are we doing about that? Are we answering that call? Or are we just, you know, going to allow them to close our schools and do what, what, what's happening with our children who were attending those schools? Because I, I, I find it hard to believe we're not having the children in those numbers anymore, but I'm, I'm, I don't know. We're still having our children. They're just being crammed up on top of each other with um, poor educational systems and babysitters and, you know, resources and police officers ready to arrest them <laughs> and medicate them and all types of stuff. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, and it, it's so much... It is it is a lot of issues. We really need to get our act together. We need to be very clear. And a lot of times, I don't think that we're really clear on what we want. Or we might say certain things that sound good, but the follow-through is not there. And um, just for instance, you know, if the school systems are poor, <laughs> Then why, or if we don't, or we know that our our children are not being educated, why are we not showing up to the school and volunteering and being at the PTA and you know things of that nature? Or even if your schedule is off, you know, take a moment to call or email and and come up with ways. You know, there's I think a lot of times we really don't feel confident in whatever action of response that we would take. Um, and, and and also feel unsupported in many ways. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that we are lacking, you know, organization and coming together, um, you know, to, to have that support, identifying people that are around us that may have a knowledge, who might have knowledge from either their work experience and exposure or even their education or connections in certain ways to identify who they are and to um, learn the process and learn what the protocol and um, steps to action are. I think things like that is is where it kind of starts, even in small ways. Um, because a lot of times we just don't do anything, or if we do something, it's an inappropriate response for what is taking place that's going to actually get us the results of what we desire. And I think that's the bottom line is being able to get the results of what we truly desire. And, you know, it's just so much of our people um, – being used to being on the losing end, that it almost seems like our people have given up hope. Um, and that's really what it looks like. That's what it feels like, you know, because it's, it's like pulling teeth or <laughs> dragging, <laughs> you know, an animal that want to go somewhere else. You know, you're trying to take to water, you know, so you can't, you know, make a horse. You know, you take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You know, you can have the medicine that's going to heal, but you can't make it. If they're not going to take it, they're not going to take it. Um, you know, and I think a lot of times it's just constant disappointment or, I don't know, conditioning. It definitely is a lot of conditioning. We have been oppressed, <laughs> you know, 
for some time now in in so many different ways. So, you know, we we are strong though and we continue to move. We continue to move on and the energy will continue to flow. <clears throat> like Baba said, it will always be a, a people who are trying to be conscious. <laughs> that energy will always be there. Um, the culture will not die. That light, you know, it's always going to be there. That fire is there. And um, I imagine until we actually free ourselves and liberate ourselves, Liberate our mind and shift, you know, and but and this is a time of shifting. You know, a lot of people are waking up. A lot of people have gotten knowledge. Knowledge of self is so much knowledge and information available out there. So it's it's like if you still ignorant, shame on you. <laughs> if you haven't taken the time, you still reading the King James version, and you haven't taken the time to see who King James is. Shame on you, you know, those kind of things um, because time has has moved on to a different, whole different um, place. We're moving into those different dimensions. And I was reading something today that was saying, you know, they're sending out waves of love, the love vibration to the planet Earth to help with that shift so that we can shift from that place of hate and destruction and war that we've been in. And it, it's been prophesied that we'll be moving into a place of more peace. And so that energy is, is coming at us, you know, right now, actually, while we're speaking with this whole new moon, this fire energy, it's a part of it. And it's just um, being aware of it, being conscious of what is happening so that we can be active, be a part of it. You know, um, a lot of people have been experiencing um, uh, facing up to things. So it gives you an opportunity to shift your mindset. It gives you, you have to face yourself so that you can learn a lesson, so that you can elevate your way of thinking and your way of living People have been going through these experiences more and more because that is a part of this process that we're in. And it is moving towards uh, having more communities, um, having more people who are working together, people who are um, in tune, you know, like minds and ways, those that is the vibration. That is the, the vibration of the age of Aquarius. So um, it's exciting. It's an exciting time to be uh, present and a part and aware, you know, as we're seeing these changes and shifts and all this energy coming um, at this time. Um, so, yes. What, well, I will, I, it's only... A few people who are left, if there is anyone else who would like to join the conversation, uh, you could dial one, and we will bring you in if you have called in. And we do have a comment in the chat room um, from Mama Fetty, Peace and Love, Mama Fetty. And she was talking about Professor Smalls um, talking about our spirituality and how there are so many people who still have that Negro religious mindset and they reject our spirituality. And we know we we definitely are dealing with that. But at the same time, even some of those churches are fasting and they are shifting and, you know, taking on new information as well. So they on land too. (laughs) They on land. (laughs) <laughs> they have an economic base People are religiously Consistently putting their money in Now what they doing with it um, right. <laughs> I'm not quite certain You know 
it warms my heart every so often I run into, you know, a, a congregation or a body of people who are um, empowering the um, b- body of people that are, are coming together to form that organization. But it's not often. <laughs> it's not that often. But that opportunity mm-hmm. is there. So it's like, Whenever, like even my father, he he's very active in his church, and I try to encourage I try to encourage him to encourage the pastor, or whoever. Like, uh, when are y'all gonna do a credit union? <laughs> you know, right. like the whole original tithing mm-hmm. concept was bringing bringing th- bringing what you have to the storehouse, which is more or less like a bank than anything else. And so, um, you know, I I, tr- I don't really diss them too much. You know, it's like there's certain things, you know, it's like, okay, we got to outgrow this. But there's certain things that we really can learn because they're coming together on a regular basis, putting their money together, buying up land with buildings and things like that. Yeah. But with our awareness, <laughs> I'm sure that we can think of other things to do with the finances such as what we have brought up for us at this conversation tonight. But oh. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot. We do have a caller who wants to uh-huh. join in. So I'm bringing in our caller at area code 219. Peace and love and welcome. Uh, peace and love. I was going to say, so um What's stopping us from from those few black-owned banks that are in our neighborhoods, from us going to those black-owned banks and developing a dialogue or whatever to say, okay, we're ready to start a campaign where we go through our neighborhood and uh, influence other, our family members or whatever, our friends, to switch from the banks that they have to their bank. But we're only willing to do this if you are willing to uh, support our agendas, our, you know, our economic freedom. And if we can start doing that in, you know, in our little neighborhoods or whatever and then build that campaign further, you know, to this city or that city, you know, what's stopping us from doing that? Because I did see where TI and... I was the Killer Mike. Uh, they had a whole bunch of people, black people in Atlanta, move their money to a black-owned bank in Atlanta. So what's stopping us from doing the same thing, so that we can start building, you know, those other um, infrastructures, our schools, our police, you know, militia and stuff like that. I just think I'm that's a good idea. I don't know if you guys think. That. That is definitely a good point because um, we are the only thing to me, you know, I I think it just takes initiative. And, you know, once you get one person (laughs) going and getting other people going, usually you have a, a person or people who can influence others. So it's just a matter of. Wow, that's real powerful, following through. Because I know yeah. we have some black banks as well as credit unions. Right. <clears throat> so I, I'm, right. I've been considering, I've been wanting to do it for a long time. But it's just a city I was in back in Gary that wasn't a black-owned bank, even though the city is like 85% black. There was no black-owned mm-hmm. bank. Um. A black guy bought up some land and uh, opened a grocery store there. And the, when I say this grocery store was very nice or whatever, but all the other grocery stores around the area, like they paid people that were in the neighborhood to spread bad news about the grocery store. Um, like you go in and buy groceries, and then depending on what you bought on the gro- uh, your groceries, it would come off of your gas. So, and this is all going right back into the community, but about nine, ten months in, the grocery store closed. 
Go story closed, stay closed about two years. And then it finally opened back up, but it opened back up under Arab ownership. But now the store can't keep folks from out of there. Even white folks come from a uh, little low-end part of the city and shop that grocery store. So, you know, what's stopping us from, you know, saying, okay, I'm willing to move my money <laughs> and I'm tired of being inconvenient and, you know, going out and developing those relationships because since it's just us here in the conversation now, you know, can is that something that we can work towards? Yes, that is something that we could work towards, and we would definitely encourage our members, listeners, and followers to do that because that's a big step for us to um, to take our monies and put them into our banks uh, as well as stop boycotting basically the neighborhood stores that are owned by people who don't live in our neighborhood. That is a very big piece as well. And shifting the dollars, if we could do that, that would shift our community in a lot of ways. If we could really shift and help to build up some of the black businesses that we do have, we could hire our own people, you know, We could expand and grow and build more businesses. So that is something that we've really been waiting to see happen, you know, and and really is the next step in our um, progress, in our evolution, in our liberation is to use our power because we've talked about we have a trillion, some few trillion dollars of Money power in our in America alone, and we just don't give it to ourselves. We are giving it to we others. It to everybody else. We, right. we don't believe like that we saying. have power to begin with, and that's really what it is. I I don't think people really, but I don't think that the the numbers of what we spend really resonate. I don't think that it really resonates really at home, like hits home as reality of how much power or potential power, because it's not power until we aggregate it and circulate it amongst ourselves, because pretty much it's just dispersed energy and a lot of it. But coming together and utilizing, um, our resources, or even coming to, you know, for, for, for whatever reason. And when it comes together, it's more, that's where the power actually ha- happens. But, I mean, when we learn to really work for our own interests, and for some reason we feel that that is wrong, we always want to mm-hmm. include other people where really, if we take care of home, if we take care of ourselves, then we can be in a position to help others. But we haven't even given ourselves time or space or permission to take care or invest in ourselves. Many times there's a sense of guilt when we do focus in on ourselves. Um, Even when I say ourselves, I mean even as on an individual basis, you know. And so that, that whole balance, of it being in my eyes as far as how we utilize our energy and how we treat one another and treat ourselves coming together, um, Mm -hmm. I believe plays a large role because we're talking about governing governing, um, potential communities and nations, and we have to be able to govern ourselves. Right. Right. Um, I was just thinking that, like, that's um, that's like a political, uh, what's called like political science, almost, because we keep on thinking about, oh, well, we don't have, a, you know, these different so-called conscious communities, but well, we don't have enough guns and this and other, but 
that would be a battle won without not one life shed if we could get that done, you know, on a mass level, and especially if it's done at a certain time. Because if we look at all the black wealth that was lost in 2000, between the 2007 and 2010 period, like 50% of black wealth was just snatched away. And nobody talked about that that black wealth was snatched away and it's gone because of, you know, people foreclosing on homes and things like that. But if that money shifts from white ownership or whatever to black ownership, you know, that is definitely going to, that's going to strike a swift blow. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it's coming from so many different vast areas around the nation. You can't, you can't shoot up every city. You can't shoot up every black neighborhood. So, you know, that's my well, thought process on that. We do have another caller who um, wants to join in the conversation. So I am going to bring in that caller, and we thank you, um, sister, for bringing your suggestions, for joining and listening and everything. As well. Thank you for having me. All right. Peace and love. All right. And we'll bring in our caller calling in from area code 803. Peace and love. Welcome to the show. Hi. Greetings, sisters. How are y'all? Oh, peace and love. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Y'all may hear my dog in the background. But I just basically want to make a comment um, about us as a whole, as women. We are not built like our ancestors. We're spoiled. Things have been given to us. So we look at things a little differently. So instead of me going to the black bank a miles away, I'd rather go to the white bank, which is more convenient. So we have, as black people, we have pretty much been spoiled, and we want convenience instead of going to patronize our own businesses. First, there is only a few, and you try to go and shop black. But we don't have a certain, we don't have like a list of black businesses at our convenience, and we don't have um, local black businesses that we try to patronize, but we would rather go, not per se to a white business, but we would rather go to some place that is convenient. But, and that's because we're full, and that's because we're not built like our ancestors. They had to fight for everything they have. Now most of the things in the black community are pretty much given to us from our parents, and I see the same thing as for me. Um, I am a parent, and I see that I have for my kids in certain areas as well. Even though I'm trying to teach them now, you know, to patronize black businesses, to buy black, and we do go places to support black businesses, but it, a lot of times it's an inconvenience. Especially when you have kids, you work full time, and then you try to be, you know, try to wake people up and try to do other things. It's it's hard. It's hard, and we're lazy. We really are. Yeah. Because I can call sister yeah. anytime to and ask them, hey, can you come? You know, and watch the kids while I do this. You know, back in the day, you could just drop the kids. Oh, the people don't mind keeping them. But now you have to be cautious. And and now people pretty much stay selfish. And they want to be to themselves. So if you're working a full-time job, eight hours a day, and a single mom has something to do and she calls you, Nine times out of ten, you're going to say, no, I'm tired. I really don't feel like being bothered with the kids. You know, we're lazy. We don't have that 
I guess that fight in us like our ancestors did. Mm. Do you think a portion of that could be that we had to do it? You know, there's a, a element of, you know, we were cut off and separated from certain um, conveniences uh, or or access to certain services or, or amenities or even jobs. Um, and now... Or, or even being cut off, you you couldn't live in certain places. You could only live in certain areas, and it was amongst ourselves. And that is a shame because, and I heard somebody say it, it was in a conversation where it was like, it's a shame that we, um, see, it seems like we have to be forced into working together and doing for ourselves and supporting and giving to one another. To a certain degree, kind of I, I, I definitely agree, but there is a lot of pride and there's an the ego, um, egotistic people in the conscious community, and we can very well get the money together to come together to build a nation. Mm-hmm. It's not like we don't have the money, but then you have people, you know, you, I guess you just have to deal with like mind people. And there are people who <clears throat> who pretty much want the knowledge. You know, they want what they want to learn, you know, about their their um culture. They want to be awakened. But then, you know, you go to work and you work for the white man and you get discouraged and even though you believe certain things about your character and about yourself, there are certain things that you don't want exposed out of the fear of being fired. Oh. But and I I think that if if some of us as women had to fight and I do understand that it's because they had to fight. They had that fight in them because they had to fight. And the, it's still a fight today. But some of us mm-hmm has been fighting to a certain degree, but if it's not, all of us don't think alike, all of us don't have the same heart, so if it's not pertaining to something in your family, if it's not going on with your family or someone you know, then most likely you're not going to be that eager to go out and fight for what's happening within our community as a race. Uh-huh. Well, we do have we do have a lot of work to do, and I I do feel you. I do think we are very comfortable with where we are, even though it's not a place of freedom at all. <laughs> we uh, right. we feel because we can eat where we want to eat and sit where we want to sit and all that kind of stuff. But it's um, we have to ask ourselves: Is it really serving us and serving our highest good? And you know, is this enough? Is it you know really what we want? And when I ask those questions, I'm really not satisfied. I'm I'm I would much rather live in a community um, that is one of my dreams, actually to live in a community where I have um, control over, or at least the community has control over the food, clothing, shelter, safety, and mm-hmm. security. Um, I would like to, you know, as I'm getting older, that becomes more and more important, having that safety and security, um, because I don't necessarily feel safe where I am. I don't know, you know, if there's some Donald Trump supporters who are, you know, really racist as my neighbors or um, stuff like that. You know, it's you want you have to think about. <laughs> you know, every day. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have. Yes. Yes. So we do want to. We, we are. I'm just very thankful that the elder did have some time. Yeah. He took that time away from his family to share with us because it's the message that we need to hear. You know, we right. think that we're doing something 
And really, we have so much more work to do. We have so much further to go to really say that we even have a community. So um, I give thanks to you, sister, for your comments and um, sharing in. And 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 it is true, you know, the sisters, African women, I know to be feisty and they'll stand up in different ways. I've heard of so many stories of how they protest and how they get things um, handled. So, you know, they, they are us. We are them. And mm-hmm. we just need to probably do some things a little different. We need to our manage time. our energy and our time better, yeah. you know, think about things a little bit more seriously for ourselves. I, I feel like, you know, we are selfish. We're not thinking that these decisions that we're making are going to impact not just our children but our grandchildren <laughs> as well. And if we expand our minds into thinking that way, thinking from that perspective, then perhaps we would make some different choices. And, you know, perhaps we would choose to, you know, instead of keeping the family divided and spread all over the world, you know, choose to mm-hmm. deal with our family closer in a neighborhood together so that we will have that safety and security factor because it's important. It's so important for all of us and for our well-being because we, we, we've been surviving, but we not all of us are not thriving. Not enough of us are thriving, okay. I, I would say. So right. uh, we are getting down to the last few minutes, so I'm going to thank you. Uh, Carla, did you have anything else you wanted to say before we? No, thank you for Thank you for listening. <laughs> I just thank you know. for listening and for calling in. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> we definitely appreciate you. Oh wow! I think tonight um had a lot of positive um information to heighten our awareness and um, things that we should consider, things that we should be coming together and discussing instead of idle debates about things that are not necessarily as pertinent to our everyday existence, survival, and thriving, and strategizing and planning for future generations so that we can return to having community and doing the actual nation building that we often like to discuss um, or romanticize about. And we definitely have come a ways, but we have a long, long way to go. And, um, again, I think that um, just the, the focus with strengthening our families and supporting one another will help to gear us in the right direction for where we really truly want to head into um, as far as building community as well as a nation. So um, that's what I would have to add before we close tonight. Okay. Do I, do I. Well, we're going to continue to send some positive love vibrations out to Professor James Smalls and his family and pray that they are able to get themselves situated um, soon and with ease and grace. And we give thanks that he took that time with us. It was that's this is one of those shows you're gonna to have to listen to again because he said a lot in a little bit of time. So definitely make sure you replay and tune in to get that message that the elder had for us. And make sure that you tune in again next week. It's going to be another lively show. In fact we have a few um positive guests lined up to come on for the next couple of weeks. So um, you can definitely stay tuned in to the Rasecki Radio 
Um, and also visit us online for information about our upcoming classes and retreats. We are taking a trip to Jamaica in December. We'll be doing Comedic Reiki Level 2 there. It's going to be a fantastic time. Jamaica, the healing energy, Comedic Yoga with Netta Ankh Aku, and, of course, our Comedic Reiki classes. So you want to get that information, and you can visit us online at RosekiHealing.com to get that info. Um, Of course, we do have our morning ritual calls every Tuesday, Sunday, and Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. If you are available, you can join us. We will be pouring libation. We're going to do a little stretching. We will uh, call on the Great Mother Sekhmet, and we'll have a guided meditation. So it's a beautiful way to start your day, a way you can put your armor on, as the mamas used to say back in the days, and um, get empowered and charged up for the day and for the weekend. You know, we have to work together, bring our energy together, and... That is one thing that we do to contribute. We give thanks to all of you all for listening in. And I'm looking at the messages on the chat room. Peace and love to you, Mama Fetty and Sister Mimi. We do need to have more programs about um, startup businesses, and we'll actually be some entrepreneurs um, next week. So um, look out for that information. And... We're just going to keep it moving. We're going to keep the culture vibration high. We're going to keep talking about my arts. We'll keep working on healing the family. That's what it's about, you know, because we do want to build some communities. We do want to um, make it better for our children and for those who are not even born. And it is up to us. The power is in our hands. What we do with our time and our energy is what we what we put out there and what we do is what we will receive. So make sure that you are putting out some good energy, some good thoughts, good words. Put that love vibration out. Um, feel that frequency that is being sent to the planet and share it, you know. Everybody needs love. Love is the most healing vibration on the planet. Most of us have been hurt enough, and if we could just turn that around and just start loving each other more, um, it would make a huge difference for all of us. So definitely tap into that love frequency throughout this week. Feel the energy of the new moon, create your intentions and put them out there, going outside and say them out to the universe, shout them out to the world, say what you want, what you need, bring it to you. You have the power. We all have the power. We just have to use it. We have to remember the ways of our ancient ancestors and use it. Use that culture. Use that power. Do I. We thank you. We love you all. We're going to go ahead and close it out with Ankh Ujasaneb, life, prosperity, and good health to you all. Until the next time, hip, hip, hip. Ankh Ujasaneb, there's no time like the present right now. Uncle
For a limited time at Sprint, get $50 for each new phone you lease when you switch. That's right. You'll get $50 for each new phone on a prepaid MasterCard issued by MetaBank member FDIC. Just register for the card online and you're good to go. Get a network built for unlimited and a great price at Sprint. It's the best of both worlds. And get $50 on a prepaid MasterCard for each phone you lease. Visit a Sprint store this weekend only for sizzling Sprint Saturday deals. Card terms, conditions, and expiration apply. The all-new Toyota RAV4 asks, what if? What if your ride was refined and rugged at the same time? Introducing a car that's got style and substance to spare. The all-new RAV4 Limited. Featuring a sophisticated, muscular new exterior and available options like a premium JBL audio system and panoramic roof. The all-new RAV4 Limited. Toyota. Let's go places. JBL and Clarifier registered trademarks of Harman International Industries Incorporated.